station. This is Time.com. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. Well, thank you for being with us today. And I wanted to just jump right in and ask you, uh, what time did you guys punch in for work this morning, and what does the day ahead look like? We started about 7.30 this morning, and the rest of the day is uh, various things. You have science. Science. I have some repairs to do. What do you got today, Alex? I had several little science experiments already today. And uh, I think uh, for the rest of the day, we have um, a training event for the new cargo vehicle that we expect, Orbital, uh, that's uh, coming in the next two weeks. So we're going to actually use the station manipulator to do some practice grapple uh, with it. And then in the evening, I think I have uh, a little bit more science experience. So it's a quite a various, well, varied day. It's, it's pretty nice. So it's about a 12-hour day? Yeah, when you include the working out we have to do, it's about a 12-hour day. And, Reed, this one's for you. You've been a big presence on Twitter and social media, something the astronauts of the Apollo era never had to think about. So how do you, how do you see the astronauts' job changing over the decades? Well, I think the astronauts have always wanted to share their journey with as many people as possible. And I think Apollo, with the tools they had, they did a phenomenal job. Uh, we're just lucky to live in this day where, you know, I take a photograph with the, uh, with the camera and uh, we just come back and we can email it straight into our Twitter feeds. And it just does a, it makes it so much easier to share this experience. And so it's almost just become a, a little collateral duty of ours. So you don't even think about it through the day. It's so easy, uh, but it's appreciated and we really enjoy doing it. And you're keeping in touch with the world that way, but how do you keep in touch with your families? You're gone for a long time. Yeah, we're gone for about five and a half to six months, and uh, NASA does a great job of helping us keep in touch with our family. So once a week, we actually get to do a, a fairly short video conference. So I've been talking to my wife and kids. I even had one with my mom and dad. So that's really been fantastic, and uh, that kind of support is really special for us up here and uh, really, really increases the morale on the weekends. And are you able to email back and forth, or is that just not available? No, uh, we have the chance of emailing pretty much the whole day. Uh, uh, once in a while, if we have two minutes between two experiments, we can go to our uh, uh, computer stations and then just send an email and receive. So uh, actually, I feel more in touch with my family uh, right now than I did during most of the training because uh, my family lives in Europe and the, the time difference from Houston is actually uh, quite uncomfortable to have a, a telephone conversation because it's either deep uh, early in the morning for one party. So up here, uh, for me, it's easier, uh, and that's remarkable, I think. This one's for Alex. Congratulations on yesterday's uh, World Cup score. And how well have you been able to follow Germany's deep run to the final round? We, we were actually pretty lucky that uh, most of the games happened during the evening hours that we had here. So uh, after our work was done, we got uh, uh, some live feed actually from Mission Control in Houston. So that's never guaranteed and it only works when we have some bandwidth left. But we were pretty lucky. So most of the games of the U.S. and Germany we, we saw live and that, that was of course a, a good treat for us. And there were a lot of wows yesterday, uh, as you imagine. <laughs> I would imagine. Down on Earth too. Speaking of the World Cup, Steve, it was mostly fun in games when Germany beat the U.S. in the first round, but the recent U.S.-Russian friction over Ukraine is a far more serious matter, and the other three members of your crew are Russian cosmonauts. Does that kind of thing ever present a problem in the close quarters of a space station? No, it does not. We've become good friends with our Russian colleagues. We've trained with them for a long time, been up here with them for a long time, and uh, that kind of issues don't arise for us, doesn't cut us any kind of friction. And I imagine the fact that you look out the window and you see uh, no borders visible from space makes it, it gives you a whole different perspective on things. Yes, it does. And as Alex pointed out, we also watch the, Rush, uh, the uh, soccer games together, so that uh, kind of bonds us together, too. Absolutely. We've got a, a handful of questions from uh, some of our readers. This one comes from a young reader named Luke, 
who wants to know, what do you miss most from Earth? Again, you're up there for a long time. Oh, it's the simple things I think that you miss most. And for me personally, I miss a shower, a nice warm shower in the morning. If we could get that going up here, <laughs> wow, that would be something really, really super. But for now, uh, that's the number one thing. I did see I did see on a TV show a couple of days ago, a family sat down and had a big pizza with a soda. And Ooh. man, <laughs> I was at that point, I was missing pizza a little bit more than the uh, than the shower. But overall, that's where we are. We actually did get three pizza questions from readers, so they were right on the money there. Um, from some of our, our photography fans who read Time, what cameras do you use, and are there limitations on what cameras can be used in space? Can you just use an iPhone to take a picture up there? Well, you could take an iPhone, but, uh, of course, uh, what we see out the window is so beautiful that we need something with a little bit more resolution. So we have, uh, like, professional uh, SLR cameras, all sorts of lenses. Sometimes, like, if you want to take a picture of a typhoon or a hurricane, you need a wide-angle lens. So, uh, And then uh, if you want to take a picture of your hometown, you have this uh, huge 800-millimeter lens that you can actually see houses, individual houses. And in. it's pretty amazing what you can do. And also, it's amazing to see what the cosmic radiation does. Like, uh, we really really have to use up these cameras like they only last for half a year or a year and then the the pixel damage through cosmic radiation is so big that we actually bring up new ones and i imagine the view of the nighttime sky or it's always the nighttime sky of course is radically different with no atmospheric interference that is true the stars do not twinkle up here they just are pinpoints when there's so many of them it's so beautiful where do you go for privacy? The station has as enough, enough as much uh, habitable space as I think a 747, and yet that's all the space you've got. Do you ever find that you need a place to retreat and get a little time alone? Well, I'd say, you know, working with these guys, I'd almost say no. It's uh, it's always a good it's always good fun. But we each actually do have we each actually have our own little bedroom. It's about the size of a telephone booth, uh, so it can fit about you. And uh, we have two laptops in there to connect with the outside world. But uh, really, it's pretty comfortable, and we treat those with the with the highest level of respect. So my bedroom is my room, and uh, and that's my little place to go if I need some privacy. But to date, I mean, it's really just been a sleeping quarters. Uh, most of the time, we're out here socializing, inviting our Russian crew members down or heading down to see them uh, in the evenings. And uh, really, it's it's a good community living situation. And speaking of sleeping, do you dream differently in space? Is there something about the experience, unconsciously knowing where you are, that changes the way you experience dreams? Actually, I've been asked that question a lot. And I, I, in the first weeks, I never remembered my dreams. But I did have one dream that I remembered last week. And that was actually with, with, with Reed launching on a, on a rocket from Canada to fly to Baikonur from where we mounted that rocket onto a Soyuz and then flew to space. So I thought that was a pretty remarkable dream. <laughs> and one thing, another thing that I noticed at night is actually that I sometimes I wake up at night and I don't know where up and down is. Of course, there is no up and down. And I believe that in that moment, I I think I'm head down or somewhere, somewhere turned around, but then I switch on the light and I realize that I'm actually completely normal. So uh, that happened to me quite a few times, and I actually did hear that happens to, to other people once in a while as well. And I'm sure there are lots of good days in space. What's the toughest day you've had up there, a day you were just happy to see come to an end and go to bed and forget about? There was a day where Alex took some hair clippers and he stood a little too close to me and our commander, uh, Dr. Steve Swanson. And I got to say, I was happy when that day came to an end. <laughs> and you've got a few months for your hair to grow back, so that's good. Um, and I guess this will be our final question. Um, I know you don't get a lot of free time, but when you do have it, how much of that do you spend simply enjoying the view of the earth outside your window? Almost all of it. That's one of our biggest free time events that we do up here. And then, of course, we, we always want to take a picture and share it. So then we spend the other part trying to uh, take uh, process the pictures and get them down to everybody else. So that's pretty much what we do with our free time. 
Terrific. Thank you so much. I found, I found the biggest challenge, come actually. Come come All right, we are joined live from space now, and I only probably get to say that once in my life, so I'm enjoying it. Live in space with astronaut Reed Wiseman. Reed, how is the weather 250 miles above Earth today? Uh, today, I could actually say it's a little bit chilly in the U.S. laboratory where I'm standing, but in general, our weather is perfectly constant, about 72 degrees and maybe uh, 10 to 15 percent humidity. So it, it pretty much doesn't change for six months. All right. Well, of course, we get to speak with you today, Reed, because you are our graduate of RPI, just the third from that school, I believe, to make it into space. And you honored that legacy three days ago, snapping this photo. We'll bring it up here of the city of Troy and RPI. There it is. You must be so proud of your alma mater, Reed. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that, that school really, that's where I grew up. That school set the, the ground road for me for the rest of my life, for my career in the Navy, and then also coming down to NASA. So there are so many gifts I've had in my life, and I really owe uh, about 90% of them to the education and really the life education as well that I got at Rensselaer. Anybody you want to say hi to there, Reed? Uh, I just pull this out real quick, and I, I think I should just say hi to, to everybody at, uh, at RPI. I'm ready for hockey season to begin. I wish I was going to stand in line at, Union, uh, at the Union to buy some tickets, but uh, I think this year I'll just have to watch it on the, on the TV. Oh, my gosh, that is amazing. How, how timely. <laughs> Thank you for having that. Uh, of course, you're, you're a Twitter celebrity now. Uh, if you're not aware, folks, Reed is tweeting out space pictures to... Uh, more than 150,000 followers, and every day, myself included, we all get these beautiful, beautiful, spectacular shots uh, of the Earth. And let's look at a few here. Uh, Reed, we're looking at pictures of the northern lights. You said you, could, you felt you could almost reach out and touch them, and you seem so humbled uh, by these views of the Earth. <laughs> Well, it's a, I, I had never seen the aurora before I came up to the space station. Unfortunately, never got to see them with my own eyes on Earth. But up here, it's just this amazing green light that kind of snakes its way through our upper atmosphere. And we're only 250 miles up, and it almost feels like you're flying through the aurora when you're on the space station. It's incredibly dynamic, very, very beautiful sight to see from above. Well, it's just stunning to look at. You're keeping up with current events, too, Reed. Some pictures of uh, our recent hurricane, Arthur, that we've got. And uh, we've also seen some shots of Super Typhoon Nagori that's over Japan right now. What strikes you uh, about a storm on Earth when you're able to see it from way up there? Oh, I really, the, the development of the clouds, the three-dimensional look of these storms from above, being able to look at the eye of a hurricane, uh, the, the eye of Super Typhoon Niagori was 65 kilometers across. Uh, my crewmate Alex was uh, letting us know that last night. And from up here, it just, it looks tiny. And when you really put it in your mind of how enormous these storms are, and both of these storms impacted uh, family members of mine. Uh, my wife and my parents were on the east coast of the U.S. when Arthur hit, and then my brother and his family were on Okinawa when uh, Niagori came through. So for me, it was more than just looking at a weather system. It was a real personal event, and uh, it was really nice to see these storms develop and to also know that, uh, at least up to this point, they didn't cause a whole lot of damage. You've also say, you've said before, too, that the, the clouds turn a 2D view of Earth into 3D. What do you mean by that? Well, when you look out from 250 miles up, the Earth is really just an almost perfect sphere with, with one exception. When the sun starts to set or rise and you can see the sunlight kind of coming from almost from underneath the clouds, it just lifts the clouds up off of the ocean or off of the continents that they're over, and it gives you this spectacular 3D feeling that it's really the only time you feel that up here, and it's really, really crystal clear, and it's hard to show it in the photos. I think I've captured it once or twice, but very hard to catch that. I'm sure it's just best to see it from up there. Uh, what can you tell us about Expedition 40? What sorts of uh, science experiments are you working on? Well, 
We've, we've been going for about a month and a half now, and I would say uh, at least 50 to 60 percent of our days are based on science. Right now, I'm, uh, I'm burning a lot of stuff. We have a bunch of very small fuel samples, and we're burning them here in microgravity just to see if we change the oxygen, how, how do these flames change, and how does the suppression of these flames change when we're up here in space, and some really exciting uh, results. My crewmates have been working on some capillary flow experiments, looking at fuel in tanks and how uh, uh, zero G or microgravity environment changes the way water works. It's amazing to watch water just creep all over. If you get some on your hand, it'll just creep up your arm. Very different than down on Earth. And of course, our bodies are uh, huge laboratories up here. So we've been doing ultrasounds of leg muscles, ultrasounds of our hearts, our eyes. Uh, so really uh, tons of work, tons of work going on. Important work, too, but I also understand there's time for fun. Uh, we are reading some tweets uh, about how you like to watch World Cup soccer while hanging from the ceiling. And I also understand you had to shave your head. Was that a, a bet that you lost or something? Yeah, it was a tragic Germany versus USA game, and my crewmates right here laughing at me from behind the camera. Um, but that, you know, it's, it was great crew camaraderie, and I'm really glad we did it. In fact, I like the new uh, haircut. I think I'm going to keep it this way for the rest of the mission. Very low maintenance, very easy up here. And uh, really, watching World Cup has been the thing that's brought our crew together, at least for the first month up here. Uh, we have three Russian crewmates, one German, and two Americans. And every time there's a World Cup game on, we crowd around this little satellite uplink that we have, and we watch the play. So it was great to see Germany, Brazil last night, especially having uh, my crewmate Alex up here. It was a big win for him. Reed, we're starting to come to a close here in our limited time. I want to draw our attention to this one picture. Sometimes you write almost poetically on Twitter, and you took this shot that we're going to see of uh, one single die uh, from a pair of dice kind of floating in the air over Earth, suspended in space. It seems so metaphorically beautiful, almost to say that uh, in the end our lives uh, on Earth are little more than a roll of the dice. What do you think about that? Well, I certainly hope there's more to it. I think you make your own luck, and uh, if you work hard and you just try to be an overall good person, that you're going to have a great path. Uh, I'd say I really love that photo because uh, here's this beautiful Earth, and there's this completely out-of-place object just floating there, and it's a, it's a human-made object. And I think that's why so many people kind of relate to this. It's a simple little die, and it looks so foreign in this place, and that's how we feel up here. We, uh, we love living and working up here, but it's a completely foreign environment. It's really amazing to get to live and work in the International Space Station. It's so cool. It's so beautiful, everything you've done. And of course, I want to leave it on one final shot here that you took, since uh, you're such a Twitter celebrity now. Uh, your message from June 19th. Uh, you've, you've been up there uh, at that time just about three weeks when you posted this picture, uh, beautiful view of the ocean. And I believe what you said was, uh, I will never tire of this view. If we can roll that picture up now. It really is stunning, everything that you get to see. Uh, this guy from RPI up in space now. Great talking to you. Thanks for your time. Uh, really a pleasure. All right. RPI grad Reed Wiseman live from space on the International Space Station. Reed, thank you much, and keep flying high. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event.